My name's Paul Willis. I'm director of the Royal Institution of Australia, or RIOS, and it's my pleasure to be your host for this evening. Welcome, welcome everyone to RIOS PD Plus session on organ tissue donation, the gift of life. And a special welcome to those of you who are watching online. If you are watching online and you'd like to ask questions at any point, please uh, submit your questions via the chat roll feature, or you can tweet us using the hashtag DonateLife. Thanks to the support of the Organ and Tissue Authority, tonight we are launching a new teacher resource to help you bring organ and tissue donation to your science classroom. These complement the existing resources which cover several curriculum areas, including English and civics and citizenship, already available through the Donate Life website. Did you know that a single donor can transform the lives of 10 people and significantly improve the lives of many more. And tonight we'll be exploring the complete process of organ donation and we'll be joined by some experts in transplant medicine, organ donation and medical ethics. But tonight we're going to start with the story of Alex. We're incredibly grateful to have Karen Ongo with us. Uh, she works as an assistant to a, VA, a VET pathways coordinator at a, at a school, and your family experienced the organ donation process firsthand in 2012. That's right. Tell us your story. Um, okay, um, Alex was uh, our second child of four. Um, he was 18 and a half when uh, he died of meningococcal disease. Um, the surgeons did everything that they could. Um, uh, they tried to relieve the pressure in his brain uh, despite removing most of his skull. They, um, they, it was, just didn't work. Um, and he, um, they, they told us that there was pretty much no hope for him. Um, it was probably still another day before he was pronounced brain dead. Um, you know, it was during that time that we started thinking, you know, when was the transplant coordinator going to come and, and, and chat with us? Um, um, the transplant coordinator that, that we had, she was, she was an angel. She ran us through what would happen. She explained everything. She, uh, we didn't feel uh, pressured or um, rushed um, in any way. Um, we were able to, uh, the, the procedure was going to happen the next day. Um, we were able to see him beforehand and again after. Um, you know, he looked perfect after. Um, and the coordinator stayed in touch with us and she let us know that his organs went to six, six different people. Um, and she was in touch with us quite often to let us know sort of how they were, how they were going. Um, and we know that we know that Alex would have been very, very happy with, with that outcome. And it's an ongoing process, isn't it? Because you still have feedback from, yes. um, let's see, his heart was donated. Yes. His liver was split, split in two, in two. And, and, yes. and served to two, two yes, recipients. Yes, part of his liver went to a two-year-old toddler. Um, so that was something pretty special. It must have been... Uh, I, I can't imagine how confronting it must have been in, uh, in the mm. hospital to have these sorts of discussions mm. realising that a loved one was about to mm. become a, an organ donor. Mm. Absolutely. Is it something that uh, he'd spoken of previously? Uh, uh, yes, yes we had, we had talked about it before. I think we were going to talk about that yeah, a little we'll, later. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that, that aspect yeah. later. But yeah. So, so it, 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 it didn't come completely out of the blue for you? No, no. Um, uh, to us, it wasn't really a decision as such. It was more what would happen next. And what would your advice be to anybody else who finds themselves in the situation that you are now? What would your advice be to them now, well ahead of uh, a, a, an incident like that occurring? Obviously, yeah, obviously they need, families need to talk about it. They need to talk about it um, so, so the, their wishes are, are known. Um, and, uh, but uh, is there 
some more preparation than that, do you think? That, that, that it needs to become uh, a topic of conversation oh, in the absolutely. family rather than something that you put aside and avoid? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in our circles, obviously, it's become something that's talked about often. Um, uh, I guess a lot of other families don't think they're ever going to be in that situation, so they, so they don't talk about it. Um, and the ongoing process that I uh, mentioned earlier, have you mm -hmm. actually met any of the recipients? Or no, no, we would love to. Um, that's something that the coordinators don't encourage. Um, we, they can, the recipients can write letters um, to the donor family. We've received five, um, five of those letters, and they, yeah, they certainly help you know, give us some sense of comfort. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we, we're having you stick around for mm -hmm. this whole event because we're going to be using... We're co we'll keep coming mm -hmm. back to Alex as a, mm -hmm. as a case study that mm -hmm. we can draw upon. But uh, I'd like to, to move on now to mm -hmm. our, our next section. So can we please give Karen a big round of applause? Thank you.